This is a test, a training and exercise simulation tool, CRC edition. Image of radiation symbol in yellow triangle beside word, CRC edition. Logos for Department of Health and Human Services and for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The contents of this video have not been formally disseminated by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, and should not be construed to represent any agency determination or policy. A person sits at a table. On the table are the playboard and set pieces for the tabletop game. This is a test. Hi, my name is Lauren, and I'm here today to talk with you about a training and exercise simulation tool for community reception centers. This is a test, CRC edition, a fully cooperative game that can be played with three to seven players. The estimated time to play the game is approximately an hour and a half. You can easily shorten or extend the game depending on how much time you have. In this exercise, a radiation emergency has occurred and you're tasked with setting up a CRC that will screen, decontaminate, and register the individuals that arrive. This game piece is called a meeple. She places a game piece on the table. The piece looks like a small cutout in the shape of a person. It represents the people that will be coming to your CRC. To operate a successful CRC, staff will need to work together and be mindful of the continuously unfolding situation as more and more meeple arrive. You have a base level of resources and staff, but will likely need to request additional resources throughout your shift. As in any emergency, time and resources are limited, so you will need to work efficiently to process individuals effectively and safely. Let's get started. Game objectives are to process all meeple at your CRC by the end of the shift, manage hazard levels, public anxiety, and staff fatigue to ensure they don't hit game over. You win when all rounds are over and all meeple have left the CRC. The status tracker card shows color-coded meters measuring hazard, anxiety, and fatigue. The segmented meters begin green, then progress to yellow, orange, light red, and dark red. Dark red is labeled game over. You lose if any status on the status tracker hits game over. Player mat for emergency management is shown. Each mat includes a description of the player's specific role, the specialty actions for that role, the round order, and the job actions for that role. Each round is broken into phases. Those phases are marked on your player mat. Phases are Arrival, game board showing parking area labeled Arrival, where you place new meeple on the board. Processing, resource card where you will move meeple through the stations based on resources available. The staging area is divided into two sections, meeple and funds. Funds and resources, where you'll gain 10 funds each round and any resources that you might have gained from player actions. Two inject cards are shown labeled major inject and minor inject. Injects, where you will draw inject cards and make decisions on how to resolve them. Different player mats are shown. Player action, where players can choose to use their actions to get resources or help with lowering hazard, anxiety, and fatigue on the status tracker by spending funds. Prepare, where new meeple and funds are drawn based on the table in the rulebook and any modifications from the inject cards or the status tracker. A six by three table with columns labeled round number, meeple and funds, and rows labeled one through five is shown. An inject card and status tracker is shown. The role of Incident Commander moves to the next player. Incident Commander token with the shield and red vest as icons. Let's set up the game. The game board is sectioned off into different areas with a parking lot on one side of the board and a shelter on the end. Beginning at the parking lot, movement across the board flows to contamination screening, contamination holding area, decontamination area, aka decon, post-decon and registration, then the medical shelter. The very center of the game board is an area titled Command Center. First, place your game board in the middle of the table and your status tracker somewhere on the side. Next, we'll place our starting resources on the board. You have one portal monitor at contamination screening. She places resource cards in different areas on the board. Two showers at decontamination, or decon for short. Two handheld detectors at post-decon and three registration desks at registration. Place one ambulance in the parking lot if playing with the hospital coordinator. She places cards on board. 
Next, we'll take our major and minor inject cards and place them on the board in the area labeled Command Center. Next, divvy up player mats and player tents. Give the incident commander token to the emergency manager. She places player pieces on the status tracker for fatigue. She places small orange pieces on the status tracker's anxiety and hazard. She places an orange piece on round one on the game board. Next, we take our player pieces and play markers and set them on the status tracker and on round one on the game board. Pieces on the status tracker start in the rightmost yellow area. Place the staging area beside the board. We use this to hold pieces before the start of each round. Draw eight meeple from the bag and place them on the staging area. If you don't have a bag, you can use a cup or other holder. Green tokens. Count 10 funds represented by this piece and place them on the staging area too. For future rounds, check the rulebook to see how many meeple and funds to draw. Cover page of rulebook. Place all remaining pieces beside the board. We'll use them later. Now that we're set up, let's play around. We will use five players in this example. Different player mats appear. They will be Emergency Management, EM, Person with Clipboard, Public Health, PH, Person with Clipboard and Glasses, Radiation, RAD, Person with Atomic Symbol on Clothing, Fire and Police, FP, Person with a Law Enforcement Badge, and Public Information Officer, PIO, Person with a Microphone. Each player has special abilities to help at the CRC. For the first round, the incident commander is the emergency manager. Person representing emergency management passes incident commander token to other players. This token will get passed around throughout the game. Phase one, arrival. She takes Meeple from staging area and places them in the parking area on board. The incident commander takes the meeple from the staging area and places them on the board in the parking area labeled Arrival. Phase 2. Processing. We will select meeple to move through our CRC. The processing capacity of each station depends on how many of each resource we have and the meeple points in the bottom right corner of each resource. She indicates the number on a resource card. Meeple points are a key concept in the game. Resource card with number two in bottom right corner. They represent how much processing power it takes to respond to Meeple's needs. If they are sick or require extra attention or assistance, they will have more Meeple points. Let's look at an example of how you choose which Meeple to process. The registration resource can process two Meeple points worth of Meeple per resource. Green Meeple are worth one Meeple point. Yellow Meeple are worth two Meeple points. She indicates the number two in the bottom of the resource card. We have three registration resources and can process two meeple points each or six total. We can process a combination of meeple. For example, we can process two yellow and two green meeple, three yellow meeple, or six green meeple. Okay, now let's work on processing our eight meeple that arrived. The first station is contamination screening. The portal monitor has a processing power of five meeple points. We have six green meeple and two yellow meeple, which total 10 meeple points. Since contamination screening can only process five meeple points, we'll choose to process one yellow and three green. All other meeple stay waiting in the parking area until next round. You'll note that there are two paths which our meeple can go, clean and dirty. To determine where they go, we check whether or not the chosen meeple are contaminated, which is indicated by a black X on the bottom of their feet. She turns Meeple over and points to a mark on the bottom of some of the pieces. Clean Meeple follow the clean arrows to waiting before registration. She slides the clean Meeple across the board, skipping the contamination and decon areas completely. Contaminated Meeple follow the dirty arrows to the contamination area. We'll work through the rest of the stations now from top to bottom. Next, we have the decontamination station and we currently have two showers with one meeple point of processing, or two total meeple points. Since we have one yellow and one green meeple waiting in the contaminated area, we could choose either, but not both. To be most efficient with our processing power, let's do the yellow meeple. It moves through decon to the waiting area. The post-decon station has two handheld detectors or four total meeple points. 
the yellow maple can be processed and moves to wait in line for registration. Now let's move to registration. We have three maple waiting in line, or four total maple points, and three resources, which is six maple points total of processing power. All maple are processed, moved to the shelter, and off the board. A single green maple waits in contamination holding before decontamination. One yellow and three green maple are waiting in the parking area. Meeple who were unable to be processed wait in line until next round. If there are any yellow meeple in your CRC at the end of the round, you'll have to increase anxiety by two on the status tracker. We notice there's a bottleneck at contamination screening and decon. We may want to prioritize getting resources for those stations during the player action phase, phase five. Phase three, funds and resources. The incident commander takes the 10 funds from the staging area. These are your current funds. If there were resources here, we would place them on the board. Phase four, injects. The incident commander draws one major and three minor inject cards and passes them out to the group to read aloud. After all cards have been read, players discuss which options they would like to take for each card as a group. Our four injects are pet act, contaminated and breastfeeding, slip and fall, and reallocation of resources. Injects always have a title, narrative text, and action text. Action text will mention plus or minus a value to one of the three meters on the status trackers, paying or receiving funds, or gaining or removing resources. You can choose to resolve injects in any order as long as you resolve all of them. We'll walk through our injects. First, we'll do the reallocation of resources because it's a card that helps us and has no choices to make. It says, Neighboring CRC has less meeple to process and send staff to assist with registration. Gain three registration desks. We grab three registration resource cards and place them on the board at registration. Next inject is our major inject, Pet Act. Pets and their owners are showing up at your CRC and you need to determine where to put them. Choose one. Outside check-in slash holding, pay three funds, Inside check-in slash holding, pay five funds, send away, plus five anxiety. We choose the inside check-in and pay five funds. Next inject, slip and fall. Water has begun building up in the decontamination station and has caused a slip hazard. Choose one decontamination resource to not use next round. Plus one hazard and FP, fire and police, plus one fatigue on the status tracker. Note that plus means we move to the right towards game over. Last inject, contaminated and breastfeeding. A meeple is contaminated and very concerned about what breastfeeding might do to their baby. Staff must offer counsel. Choose one, radiation counsels, minus one hazard, plus one anxiety, and plus two fatigue to radiation on the status tracker. Public health counsels, plus one hazard, and plus two fatigue to public health. Work together, all staff, both radiation and public health, each gain one fatigue. We choose to work together. We move both public health and radiation fatigue plus one towards game over. Note that CRC hazard in our player's fatigue is in the orange, meaning we will have to draw extra meeple and injects next round if we don't use our player actions to bring those status levels down. The marker for anxiety is in the orange draw one extra meeple area. The fire and police, radiation, and public health player pieces are in the orange draw one extra inject card fatigue area. Phase five, player actions. Now we can discuss what player or job actions we can take to reduce items on the status tracker or improve our throughput. Remember that player actions happen after all injects have been resolved. Each player mat is broken into sections. The top of the player mat says what each player specializes in, like getting resources or managing the status tracker. The middle section has the phases for each round. The bottom has the job actions that the player can perform. Each action has a cost to use it in the top right. When playing with five or more players, each player can choose one action per turn. For three to four players, players can choose more than one action. The emergency manager gets resources and reduces hazard. Radiation gets portal monitors for contamination screening and can rearrange detection equipment. Public health gets registration desks and reduces hazard and anxiety. 
fire and police reduce hazard and fatigue and can get decontamination resources. The PIO reduces anxiety and can reduce the number of meeple that will arrive in later rounds. Self-care action has two squares. Every player has a self-care action. This costs nothing and helps players reduce their fatigue. Players can track limited actions indicated by a square on that action by placing a cube on top of it. When all squares are covered, players can no longer use that action. Looking at our meeple lines and status tracker, we might want to reduce our player fatigue, especially those that are in the tracker's draw one extra inject area. CRC hazard is also in the orange, and if we don't reduce it, we'll have to draw an extra meeple. We have lines at contamination screening and decon, so we might want more resources for those stations, especially since we cannot use one shower next round. After discussing and looking at possible player actions, the group decides that radiation will move detection equipment to help with processing. She moves one post-decon resource to the contamination screening area. We can move handheld detectors to the contamination screening area. We will leave one at post-decon. We need more processing power at decontamination, which could come from FP requesting a mobile decontent. If fire and police perform an action, they cannot do self-care. They have one of the highest levels of fatigue, so we look to see what other players can assist them. The PIO can perform psychological first aid at no cost. Twice per game, they can reduce another player's fatigue by two. She moves the fire and police piece back two levels on the status tracker for fatigue. The PIO performs this action, reducing FP fatigue by two. Since FP is out of the orange, they will gain a mobile decontent and add it to the decon area. She adds a resource to the decon area. It has four showers and the number four in the bottom right corner. Next, the emergency manager will contact the Emergency Operations Center, or EOC, to request a resource. We can choose one resource type to gain. Since we just received registration desks, we request two handheld detectors for post-decon and place them on round three on the round tracker. Last, since there are no funds left, public health can only do a free action they choose to take a self-care action. They reduce their fatigue by two on the status tracker. It's important to take breaks when you can and not let actions go to waste. We still have CRC hazard and radiation fatigue in the orange. Draw one extra meeple and inject areas. This means we'll draw one extra inject in phase four next round. Phase six, prepare. To prepare for round two, the incident commander draws 12 meeples, adding one extra due to our increased hazard, gathers 10 funds, and places them in the staging area. This information can be found on a table in the rulebook. We check to see if there are any yellow meeple remaining in our CRC. There are. We increase anxiety by two. This moves our anxiety into the draw one extra meeple area, so we add another meeple to our staging area. The incident commander then passes the incident commander token to the player on the right and moves the play marker to the next round on the round tracker. Rounds two through four repeat this process. Round five is shortened and will only be phase two, processing. This helps you get any remaining meeple through your CRC after you have closed. That's it, now you're ready to open your CRC. For more in-depth information, refer to the rule book titled, This is a Rule Book, or to the facilitator guide titled, This is a Facilitator Guide. Helpful reminders can be found in the back of the rule book. Thank you and enjoy your test. For more information, contact Simpler at cdc.gov.